I saw some species are much better when drilled than broadcast. So, you know, for example, radishes, you know, they'll work if broadcast, but they are much more successful if you get them in the ground. Annual ryegrass, you know, you're, you're pretty much, you know, you'll do pretty well either way. Course in soil management, where we spent about three weeks talking about cover crops, and uh, I did a unit where I was looking at some alternative methods for establishing uh, cover crops. And some of my colleagues at Penn State and Cornell uh, had been working with a high clearance drill to interseed you know, cover crops into corn when it was about uh, knee high. And so uh, after sharing some of the results uh, of that, the students were like, well, can we get one of those? And I said, well, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to check it out. And the guys at Penn State gave me a good price on a, a two row model, which was uh, perfect for small plot research. And uh, after we got this thing, I felt obligated to use it. <laughs> so uh, the last several years, what we've been doing is evaluating a wide range of different uh, cover crop species to see which ones are a good fit for a fairly challenging environment underneath the corn canopy. And we had several questions we wanted to ask. One was, you know, drill seeding better than broadcast in that sort of setting. Uh, and we also wanted to see uh, if there were any negative consequences uh, for corn, that kind of being the first, you know, rule is, you know, do no harm. So we, you know, were able to get a small uh, grant from uh, Grasslands Oregon. They also have been very generous in sharing seed with us uh, in those uh, trials. And so just to give you a little bit of a, a sense of how it works, uh, we typically will go in, we'll plant uh, our corn, and when the corn is at the you know, V4 to V6 stage, so when it's about knee high again, we come in and we uh, will drill three rows of cover crops uh, into uh, that, that stand. And the you know, thing that I've observed so far is the, the cover crops that do well are the ones that start quickly because uh, they need to because before long the, the corn canopy has closed and things start to get really hot and dry towards the end of the summer. So it's it's mainly you know, an effort to try and establish something that will survive and then when you take the corn off there's a cover crop already established and you know really the, the end goal is to try and allay some of the concerns that we heard about today uh, regarding you know, not having sufficient time to establish cover crops you know, after corn harvest. And so we've had uh, you know, some successes and failures. Uh, many of the species that we've tried haven't worked. Uh, we've, we've tried uh, you know, cereal rye. That doesn't seem to do too well under the corn. Uh, the things that have worked, uh, red clover has worked pretty well. Uh, I've had, you know, one of my most consistent uh, performers has been the Kentucky Pride uh, Crimson Clover. I was, you know, skeptical given kind of some of our uh, weather conditions in the winter that, that would be able to survive, but that's done pretty well. Uh, annual ryegrass has been, you know, a very consistent performer as well as uh, tillage radish. And uh, I've made the additional step of doing some work in the greenhouses to look at shade tolerance. Uh, so we're growing you know, some of these species in pots under you know, shade cloth of different you know, types. And you know, surprisingly enough, the, the radishes are extremely shade tolerant. Uh, and I, I, was, I found that to be fairly surprising. So uh, yeah, some of the other questions that uh, are important to look at, what are the negative consequences for uh, the main crop? I haven't seen uh, very many of those, frankly. Uh, we've not ever measured in, in the last you know, three years any instances of a 
uh, of a yield penalty by interceding into uh, the corn. Uh, the challenge is is weed management. Uh, in our conventional approach, uh, we come through and we spray Roundup at the same time that we're interceding. So the timing of those uh, two operations works pretty well. And uh, so that's you know, helped with weed management. But a bigger challenge is, you know, how do you, uh, you know, burn down the previous crop? And are there some short duration uh, you know, residual herbicides that you know are not going to inhibit germination of your cover crop you know when you get in there and intercede it and so we've we've found some things that provide us that window but that's still an, an open area of work so if, if anybody wants a, an interesting topic or wants to be a grad student you know that might be a uh, you know something that we could work together on the other nice thing is, so no yield penalty. Uh, we've done corn on corn just to see, you know, what the potential impacts might be on a subsequent corn crop. And is it potentially possible to essentially compress a rotation by having a interseeded cover crop? So can we get corn on corn to perform like a corn soybean rotation? And yeah, one of the nice things that we have seen is uh, in uh, several instances, following red clover, following balanza clover, we've seen uh, you know, significant uh, yield improvements about, you know, about 10 to 12 bushel to the acre uh, improvement in that second year. So uh, promising uh, results. But I would still say, you know, we're, we're very much in the early exploration phase. This is not something that, you know, I would say I'm ready to roll out, but it's, uh, you know, it's been an interesting uh, project to work on with my students. So, go ahead. Have you seen any organic trees and stuff that sort of trees and corn, and soybeans, and the most of the I, I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, I've, I've uh, planted some, yeah, 96 day uh, corn and uh, been able to harvest that a, a bit earlier and you know that opens up the window for the cover crop to put on more vegetation in the in the in the fall so I think that's a, a very very good possibility and in fact one of the areas where I've seen the interceding of uh, cover crops into corn work the best particularly in Pennsylvania is is in uh, silage systems where you know they're taking that off you know in September and you've got that you know wider period to, to, for the cover crop to really get going in the fall. We've had some excellent results using our fixation balance and exactly that where they're you know not only getting this uh, silage from the corn but uh, six months later they're getting silage from the clover as well and, uh, we had a local farmer here that did it, and he got 21 tons of silage off the balance of clover. So, you know, so that, that works mm -hmm. pretty good. You know, you can make that ground pay 365, it works. And, and, you know, you're talking, you know, not huge increase of 10 bushels, but still when you take 10 bushels, even at these low corn prices, that pays for a lot of seed. Did you say you compared drilling with broadcasting? We did, yes. Uh, so that was another aspect of uh, the study that we've looked at, uh, not surprising, drilling uh, tended to have better uh, results, but uh, there I saw some species are much better when drilled than broadcast. So, you know, for example, radishes, you know, they'll work if broadcast, but they are much more successful if you get them in the ground. Annual ryegrass, you know, you're, you're pretty much, you know, you'll do pretty well either way. How many rows do you drill between the corners? Uh, three. So three, it's a three. seven and a half inch spacing uh -huh. and uh, and then, you know, a, a little gap for the for the corn to, to go in. Any more questions for Ryan? All right. Thanks again, Jerry. Thank you.